morning and welcome to Wednesdays with Darren and Cindy, where we bring you real conversation about things that affect our lives and the community. My name is Cindy Ward. And my name is Darren Powell. And we are going to be your host for our podcast. Sharing a bed with a person you love is one of life's greatest pleasures. It is the ultimate act of trust and intimacy. But more and more couples are getting a sleep divorce. An arrangement for couples to sleep in separate rooms to get away from their partner who is snoring. Well, on today's episode of Wednesdays with Darren and Cindy, we're going to hear firsthand what it's like living with a snoring partner. Joining on today's show is Timothy Ward, who happens to be my husband of 24 years. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ward. Let's get right into it. Do you mind introducing yourself and telling us, you know, or telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me uh, again. You know, married to this lovely lady, uh, 24 going on 25 years, uh, retired military, uh, 23 years, um, uh, husband, uh, father of four. Uh, it's just been a pleasure just to, uh, you know, join you guys today. Okay. Awesome. Did you leave out that part about being a cowboy fan? Or? No. Oh, no, no. Uh, I hate the cowboy. <laughs> uh, that's the number one thing. All day saints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yes. Having you here, I think we probably, everybody probably knows what's going on with this one. <laughs> but having said that, uh, have you ever thought about getting a sleep divorce? Because your spouse, we, no one knows her. <laughs> Snores. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before you answer that, I do have to say, when we we said you were bringing you on the show, Mr. Darren said, what, Miss Cindy, what? Oh, yeah, I can't believe this. You know, you snore? So, yes, please, <laughs> let them know. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, 24 years. I did not know that she snored maybe a year after we got married. So, you know, hints, subtle hints. Hey, what do you think about, um, you know, I sleep downstairs tonight, you know. <laughs> I just try to edge it on to where, hey, you know what? You're tired. You know, maybe I should go downstairs, but I never did really want to tell you, hey, your your snoring really bothers me. So, yeah. Wow. Really? So, okay. So let them know when you first found out that I snored and how were you feeling? Well, I actually, at first, I said, I can't believe it. You know, a uh, beautiful young lady, you would <laughs> never tell or ne I never knew uh, that she snored. I mean, it went from, it progressed over the years. I mean, it, it was very low, very moderate to a bear. <laughs> it, it, it got really, really bad. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how I felt. You know, I just, I was like, man, how do I take this? And how did it, you know, over a year, I didn't, I didn't know, you know. Then I started to think back, you know, as I'm thinking back now, she didn't, she didn't go to sleep before I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she kept that that part away from me for a while. So. Of course. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> I was tired, though, you know, because I, I was sleepy, but I was letting you go to sleep first. You know, we're having fun with this, but on a serious note, a lot of couples deal with this, and I've worked with a lot of couples that have had this as a, as a problem in their marriage, and I think sometimes we don't give enough attention to it. But if there's any, is there anything that you would say is a pattern of events that may trigger your wife snoring and maybe maybe it escalated to a high level? Yes, it was um, a compilation of, you know, being tired. Um, um, I would say the different type of pillows. Um, from our research, and we talked about it uh, before, you know, uh, different type of pillows and where, how your head is, is tilted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, different type of uh, mattresses. So, you know, of course we changed those out uh, frequently, uh, it just depends. Uh, actually, really, it, it really just depends. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna read this because I did pull some statistics, and I want to read them um, verbatim. Studies have shown that 80 percent to 90 percent of people who sleep beside a snore have difficulty entering rapid eye movement or REM sleep, or the deep sleep you need for a good night's rest. Sleep-deprived individuals are more likely to be irritable, feel sleepy, and have poor concentration during the day, which makes them less productive and more prone to making mistakes. 
physically how has your snor how has my snoring affected you <laughs> during the day so we're on the podcast so you gotta be honest right right well <laughs> Uh, myself personally, you know, with the military, I have sleep apnea. So, okay. uh, use a good night's rest for me is six hours. Right. So, four to five hours of sleep is, you know, my regular. However, <laughs> uh, depending on the loudness of the snore, <laughs> uh, is if I get a good night's sleep. Um, but it, it really affects me to where I will be very tired and. You know, we have a TV in the room, so usually she goes to sleep first, and then the snoring begins. I would turn the TV up a little bit uh, to try to drown it out, <laughs> and then I would get tired. Sooner or later, I would get tired, so I would turn the TV off, but then the snoring would get louder and louder, so it wakes me back up, and then I would have to uh, either turn the TV back on or go downstairs and watch TV. So. Okay. Yeah. One of the questions you asked, and this one's kind of off the record, but um, was <clears throat> the pillows. Y'all talked about the pillows yes. and things like of that sort and everything like that. I've heard stories and rumors, and you guys probably know more better than me, but sometimes positioning is a thing. And I've been yes. in situations where people around have been in a position where I had to kind of shake them a little bit, and then when I shook them, they, their snoring kind of stopped or slowed down. Does that, does that help, or is that a part of what you guys do? Let me count the ways. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of the things that uh, I have done in the past and even recently. Uh, I would nudge her a little bit uh, to make her turn over and reposition herself. Uh, I would uh, tug on the the, um, uh, the covers or, or your comforter. I would, you know, tug a little bit. That would make her reposition. Uh, a couple of times I, I nudged a little bit too hard to where she thought something was happening. And, you know, I would just pretend like I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, so. Or sometimes, you know, depending on what I'm watching on TV, you know, um, uh, the noise will wake her up and, you know, she would, you know, uh, reposition herself. And then there's times you just got to go with it. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't stop. So, yeah. Okay. 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 Wait, but I do want our listeners to know that, you know, it, he's not the victim. Okay, it, it, because I am a snorer, I wake up tired as well, too. And I don't think people realize that it doesn't just affect the person who is not the snorer. It also affects the snorer, too, because um, I don't get into real good sleep either some some nights. And I know that Tim will wake me up and say, Cindy, are you OK? Because he was like, you stopped breathing or, you know, you did this, you did that. And so um, so I as well. I'm, I'm a victim here, you know, so I, I get affected by it as well, too. I do want people to know that, that it, it's a real thing. Right. Okay. 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 Good. All right. Um, <clears throat> wow. This is this is bringing out so much good stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> I, this is really good. I think it's real relevant to a lot of people oh, and everything absolutely. like that. You said sleep apnea. Yeah. Yes. Does that mean you have a CPAP machine? No. And, and let me tell you this. <laughs> it's, it's, it goes into insomnia as well. Um, I have uh, persons in my my family. They have a sleep machine, yeah. And so we we talked about it, and I've heard the sleep machine. The sleep machine, in my opinion, is worse than listening to a person snoring. That's exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> you said victim. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going with that. So, right. so you know, like if you've ever been around that, I've been around that. Just looking at somebody with one of the things on is not a sexy, <laughs> you yeah. know, bed mate. That type is thing. so true. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I think a dog. Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. how it sounds. Yes. And, you know, if you're a light sleeper, you, the humming noise and stuff like that. You know, yeah. so it does yeah. bother you. Good, yeah. good, good. You know, you talked about a lot of uh, ways that you kind of dealt with, dealt with and everything like that and worked with it and stuff like that. Um, do you have any tips or any thoughts? I mean, you talked a little bit about it, but is there any more things that you can think of that you would do, would you, that you would recommend to the person who has a partner who snores? Uh, I would just say be patient, um, be honest, um, uh, seek medical help, you know, especially, um, you know, as a person uh, gets older, you know, of course, you know, as we get old, everybody is not going to be able to go to a gym. So, you, you know, uh, weight uh, uh, will, you know, tend to a uh, be a, a big factor of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would just suggest to, you know, seek medical help, 
research on your own, you know, get mm -hmm. educated about it and then uh, move forward from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. Um, one of the things that I read when I was reading the, re the research and everything like that, it talked about laughing about it. And I love the fact that you guys can laugh about it. And, you know, 24, <laughs> 25 years, y'all are y'all are in it to win it for sure. But uh, I love you guys' relationship from a distance. But that being said, I think it's, it, it, is that one of the things that helps you guys from a relational perspective to be able to make light of it and, and joke about it and, you know, not, not for it to be, be so serious, you know? Yes, I, I would say so. Um, at first, I was a little nervous about it uh, because... You know, a lot of people will be very sensitive, you know, and I've heard from other relationships, uh, certain things like that is very sensitive. So it, I had to, we have a, um, a, 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 a type of relationship that we're very honest with each other. And, you know, uh, we'll prep each other before we talk. Hey, it's something I need to tell you. Go ahead and laugh now. <laughs> so we, we try to prep each other that, Hey, it's something that's going to be, it's mm -hmm. funny to me, but I don't know it's going to be funny to you, but it's the way how you communicate and present it to each other. So I think over the years I, I um, did it in spurts to where it, you know, it progressed. And like I said, it got louder and louder to where I say, hey, you know what? I need to break this to her, you know, softly, gently, and, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we have a family group chat just for, you know, me and my husband and our kids that are in the States. And the funny thing about it is he will record me snoring. Okay. While I'm asleep <laughs> and send it through the group chat. So when I wake up in the morning, I just get, have all these texts, you know, from the children in the States and they're like, ha ha ha, you know, mom, you're so loud, blah, blah, blah. But, um, that's one of the ways the humorous ways that we deal with it too and i'm just like okay all right um, okay you already said that i snore okay i don't know that i'm sleep you know what i mean i don't know that but um it is he's right you know we just laugh about it and we keep on going i think that stuff kind of helps so many people because i think that some people this is so serious to them and the sleep divorce thing is serious and right. sometimes it's been i've said across some couples that it has been to a point where it was almost a deal breaker because again the relationship started to dissipate it started to get the separation because they couldn't deal with this issue uh, being in Japan, the land of the cherry blossoms, and we have just hit that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, allergies, allergies, allergies. Mm -hmm. Allergies are wearing everybody out. Right. <laughs> Does that affect this issue, any, uh, the snoring uh, during this season? I would just say um, not really. Uh, it's, it's more of uh, sinus issues, you know, headaches and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, yeah, I, I think it's been pretty good, actually. Well, yeah. for me, I just noticed that I do... Um, wake up a lot groggier with the cherry blossoms out and i think it's more it has to do more with my sinuses i believe so but no um i wouldn't know if i snored louder i'm trying i'm trying to hit the you know big bear kind of snore I'm, I'm trying to get there i'm trying to reach a whole new high you know <laughs> i'm hoping that it goes away <laughs> yeah. yeah you know um I don't want to get in y'all's business, but I will put myself out there. I am a red wine drinker, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of our listeners know that. You know? Yeah. Again, I don't do it every day. You know, right. I don't do it on the weekdays. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, the weekend I'll have me a glass of wine over dinner, you know, right. definitely on Sundays. Um, does that does that does that play a part in any of this? Uh, alcohol? If you guys want to talk I, about maybe somebody else? No, I, I don't think so. Um, no, I'm a red wine drinker too. Right. And so um I do like red wine, but um I don't know. When I drink the red wine, do, well, do I, actually, am I quiet? Actually, yeah, actually, it's it's great. Well, then I <laughs> need to up you, it. I you need to up my red you wine don't intake. Wanna, you know, become an alcoholic or anything like that. But he's like, yeah, here, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good to know. That's good to know because research shows that, that that some people they have issues sleeping with 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 uh, around you know being tired, more tired, you know, mm -hmm. after drinking and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's good that it, it it doesn't affect you guys. So this one's a little bit more sensitive, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm asking all the questions because y'all are both my. <laughs> <laughs> no, we so we we share the question, here, but this one this one is serious. Um, at any point in your relationship, I I can speak for myself is when I don't get enough rest. I'm a little grubby. I'm a little grouchy when I come through the door, you know, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a time where this has been a, you got to kind of put a strain on things relationship wise that you guys had to really kind of step back and say, hey, we need to do we need to deal with this because, you know, this is this is this is becoming a problem. or something. No, I, I don't think so. Um, 
we just deal with each other. She knows I'm a very light sleeper. Okay. Um, so um, it really doesn't bother me. It's uh, it's one of those things mentally you have to deal with, you know, uh, you know, in our relationship, you know, and personally for myself, you know, it's not a deal breaker because it's, it's a, it's a small thing actually, you know, the way how I look at it. There's more uh, things out there relationship wise that's, uh, that causes more serious problems and concerns than someone snoring. So that's just my own personal view on it, my take on it. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What, what about you? It, well, actually, when I don't get enough rest, I'm a morning person na- naturally. So I get up, I get up early and things of that nature. However, I do notice myself grouchy about two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'm I'm just done. And when I get home, I'm I'm like, well, you know, I just want to go to sleep, you know. But um, that's what I've noticed for me when I don't get enough rest, or I notice that I might have been sleep snoring loud that night and woke myself up. That you know, I, I'm grouchy about two thirty in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So that means everybody at work has to deal with it. Exactly. Once you get home, it's all yeah. better by the time you get home. Exactly. So all I have to do is work today. He's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Cindy, did you have anything else? Uh, I, I do not. I do not. So, yeah. Tim, like, any, any closing comments? Uh, hey, you know, just, I hate to say just deal with it, but, you know, communicate, you know, talk about it. Uh, it is an issue you know, that you have to talk about. So don't avoid it. You know, try those uh, small things that might help uh, to stop the snoring. But other than that, just communicate, seek medical attention, and educate yourself on it. So so that being said, small things, you know, I see people with these little things on their nose like a football player, you know? Those yeah. things, they work? <laughs> um, I, I've never tried those. Yeah, she, I don't think she ever tried that mm-hmm. uh, at all. But, um, yeah, you might want to try that too then. Really? <laughs> really, thank you, Mr. Darren. You look like a linebacker. I like a linebacker. I want to sleep with like a linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is our show for today. And like we said, we talk about 100% real life topics. And this was one of them today. Thank you for joining us for Wednesdays with Darren and Cindy. We had as our guest today, Mr. Timothy Ward. And we will see you all next week. Wow.